All right. I think we're going to get ourselves started here. All right. Uh, that's it. We're good. We're going. Hey, hey. Happy days. All right, folks. I hope everybody's having a good day. I uh, just want to check my settings. There we go. Okay. We should be looking prettier there. I had my settings drop down earlier on on the previous video that I did and uh, I didn't necessarily realize that uh, I'd had it set so low. There we go. All right. So uh, listen, uh, it's uh, my first stream this week because uh, I changed things up a little bit and uh, you know, sometimes you do that. I, uh, it's, I had a funny incident earlier today. I'm going to get on with stuff in a second, but I had a funny incident earlier today where uh, I just, re I, I, I finished off a jelly roll pen, went to grab another one to finish the page for today, and I finished that one off too. They were just both at the end of their, of their, uh, their strip. So two pens in one day, look at that guy. Boy, he drives a lot. Yeah. So anyhow. So we still got, I got one more, but that just tells me I need to go get some more. I picked up a few art supplies this week, um, and uh, I got a few books to show people. Um, see what else. I'm going to do uh, a draw later on for uh, a, a drawing for this week, and uh, then we'll get cracking on a page. But in the meantime, uh, let me talk about today's page uh so this is the page that i've done i did uh, a couple of videos today and yesterday where i walked through the process of this page this is the one that was started on monday i think it was and uh monday was just a chaotic day and so um you know we uh put this aside until i could sit down and do it in a way that you know you'd legitimately see i'm doing it and so I did uh, a couple of videos that I posted up today and uh, and uh, finished this this one off. I walked through the process. Um, I did the first half where, oh, look, happy town. And then the, the second video I did was, oh, this ain't right, you know, for the for the bottom half of the page. And uh, and then I sat down, I scanned it and I sat down and put the text to it, cleaned up the borders on it, cleaned up uh, around them. And uh, posted that up today, so that's on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, and you know for this video here for YouTube for this live stream for YouTube. So there's uh, some good stuff coming out of that. So I'm pleased. I'm quite pleased with that. So uh, this was a lot of fun. A town with a secret cult of people that don't age. Thank you, Lewis, for the suggestion. And uh, you know I. Uh, I'm doing something new for myself, and that is um, it's, uh, it's writing down the pages and uh, the page number for the, the, the thing I've completed on the back. And oh yeah, the date, I forgot about that, 21, 2024, just, just to keep a track, uh, just to keep track of all these things because you know, uh, when I sat down this week, and this is some of the exciting news I'm going to be talking about in a little bit. When I've sat down over the last couple of weeks and gone through uh, a huge amount of papers, and I showed some of those on a video, a couple of videos, where I walked through all of these pages that I've produced. Um, but going through and figuring out what the dates were, or what the names of those pages were, and what the dates of those pages were, gets a little complex, gets a little challenging. So. So there we go. So that's uh, that's a thing that I've set inside my routine to make sure that I'm getting uh, the name of the piece and uh, the number of the page as well as uh, the date on those so that when I go back to do something with those, I can find them more readily instead of having to search through all of the posts of all of the pages. Uh, I'm, and, I mean, there was 300... 358 pages last year and I'm having to scan through <laughs> looking for pages so yeah so uh, I'm a little more organized with that um, okay I got a couple of books uh, a book haul to show you 
I have uh, some supply stuff to show you, which is you know fun in the sunshine. But uh, let me uh, switch over to the overhead. And uh, now, with uh, the stuff I'm going to show you for today, there's some books I wanted to to, to bring out here and to uh, to put in front of you to talk about simplicity of line art. And uh, and then we're going to get on to the other stuff, okay? Um, but simplicity of line art is, uh, is uh, what I'm referring to in that is if the more elaborate and the more involved and the more uh, detailed and stuff art gets is fine and dandy. But the, 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 reali or the reality of that is it can often just be uh, complexity for its own sake and it doesn't actually benefit what you know what you're trying to get across in the case of what is happening uh, with the one-page stories I'm trying to tell stories that's my principal interest and so because of that um, I'm trying to approach the execution of telling stories in many different different ways and uh, but at the underlying base of it all having a strong sense of composition and having a strong sense of line art and uh, dimension is, is really important. So I've brought out a couple of creators that uh, I think uh, really exemplify this very well. This is Alex Toth. I've talked about Alex Toth a number of times. We're going to look at Alex Toth's book. This is Michael Mignola, and uh, he is another person that I've Richard referred to before, and I will look at what he does here. And this is Eric Powell. And so these are three uh, art books that I have that uh, really look at the way that uh, these guys, which are somewhat similar in, in, in their execution, but um, the way that they tell story. And uh, Eric Powell, is, is, is his work is colored now. He started out as a black and white artist, and, but his sense of line is incredibly strong. And his sense of tone and dimension in line is incredibly strong. And uh, he has a, a really funny character that he does called the goon. And, uh, and the goon is uh, it's a mob enforcer guy who has, uh, you know, he's changing the, he's, he's uh, seeing the error of his ways and changing himself for the better. Um, and he's got, hi, Linda, welcome aboard. He's got a pal named Frankie. There's Frankie. Okay, that's an early sketch of Frankie. And there's an early sketch of the goon. Um, he's got the, well, he's got a duffer hat like I wear half the time. Anyways, um, this takes place uh, down at the end of Lonely Street. Uh, the goon and Frankie live in a hotel uh, called Heartbreak Hotel. And, uh, you know, all of their adventures started after uh, uh, the, the goon was... Uh, had his heart broken. Da, 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 da. So anyways, uh, so here's Christmas. <laughs> here's a Christmas version of the goon. Um, the, the, Eric Powell's artwork is wonderful. But if you'll notice something, he focuses on the key elements of, of you know, what he's trying to get across in the story. So uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The clear draw focus is to the goon and Frankie coming through the wall. And uh, there's all these character elements in the foreground, and yet they're toned out so that you can focus on our principal characters, right? And then it introduces you in bright, shocking colors, the uh, story points in there. And they're very funny stories, anyhow. They're, they're a little ridiculous, but this is uh, one of his many characters. <laughs> Here's the goon fighting against a werewolf <laughs> just silly stuff but there's so many fantastic story tropes in his work that uh, you know they just there's just so many great elements the femme fatale character you know there's uh, just a lot to it uh, Brigadoon's Dreamland Carnival you know Seen the wild two-fisted beer drinker and his vulgar monkey. <laughs> Just, but it's beautiful artwork. And the, the approach to the character design is very simplistic. 
He's got some gray tone in there that he's developed up, which is lovely. But at the core of it, it's about the simplicity in the storytelling. And I really, really appreciate that as much as his, his, his sense of humor, like the goon in heaps of ruination. <laughs> Just, um, evil in and it's, what is it? There's another one. It's evil and it's, and it's, uh, Evil and its come up, it's I think is one, but they're just they're great stories. They're they're really crazy and they fit in uh, into them a whole bunch of gothic elements and and uh, you know like here's uh, you you say a spaceship's gonna crash here, Arr! you and you say that spaceship is a freakish one-eyed alien, Arr! Arr! and you and you also say that aliens an intergalactic crime boss bent on enslaving the world. Arr! 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 Oh my God, here it comes. Arr! Arr! Hey, watch your mouth, you stupid seal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's Frankie punching out the seal now because apparently he said something inappropriate to him while the goon is going out to take care of the alien spaceship. This is an absurd book. And, and yet at the same time, it's really fun. I like his style. He's got a couple other books that he's done over time. He's got Chimichanga. He has got... Uh, um, this is the chimichanga character it's the it's the the daughter of the bearded lady in a circus and she has found this big crazy looking ogre creature which is her, her puppy and uh and it's about chimichanga the little girl the little little baby at the the circus that's uh and her big grizzly ogre just good fun silly 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 but uh and then you've got uh Oh, his, Eric Powell's done some some illustration work. There you go. He's done a Hellboy illustration. So it's a lot of great stuff, and it's a lot of really rounding out um, a solid style of artwork. You know, here's him doing The Simpsons. And again, it's such a clean graphic storytelling style. You know, he, he simplified everything down to the core elements, and the rest of it's sort of washed out or gray toned out. So there's Eric Powell. And uh, this is a great book. Look at his own cover. The art and many other mistakes of Eric Powell. And he's got one of his own characters saying, overrated. This one says hack. This other one says bum. <laughs> Punk. <laughs> you can't laugh at yourself, folks. I don't I don't know. Now, Hellboy. Uh, as much as, you know, some people will look at this character and go, oh, it says a bad word in the title. Uh, what this is is about uh, the, the Nazis try to call forth um, uh, something from the bowels of the afterworld and in order to dominate the world. But they make a mistake in uh, their their magic spell and he arrives with the good guys. So he's raised up to be a good guy and to fight all the scary, scary monsters. And so, you know, it's, it's crazy stuff involving space aliens and, um, you know, the sort of Lovecraftian monsters and... And Vladimir Rasputin, the uh, the mad Russian monk, and Nazis, and it's just there's something to his storytelling, and I wanted to really show you this, um, the simplicity of his art that really does just focus on the story, and you know here, but he does wonderful little things like here. Hellboy is crack in the jaw of a uh, big scary werewolfy monster and uh, in the course of doing so the camera for whatever reason if we look at the panels and how we put those into the thing as though it was a camera taking shots and, and editing them together well we get this ed this panel here it's almost like a camera took a picture of the saint witnessing this event and even though Hellboy is quite flawed in his delivery, and he's not very, you know, as he tries to use technology, it backfires, and and uh, he's, you know, he's always just trying to make the most of figuring everything out. But he's guided by saints, and he's, there's all these sort of, you know, wonderful symbolism in, in the books. Like, here's, look at this fun drawing, okay? Here he is, using some sort of metal rod that has a cross at the end of it and he's fighting against this evil monster <laughs> but we know in a single image 
that he smacked that monster this many times because <laughs> this monster has been burned by this uh, by this cross because of its implication of it being evil versus the 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 you know the the cross representing good right so uh, as much as this is something where you go the title sounds contradictory or or something that I don't necessarily find uh, I want to engage in but the reality is it's a monster fighting on our behalf and trying to do good by all of us here's another really lovely example of that so he's going to a forest clearing okay there's trees shapes in order to tell us that we're in the midst of a forest he's he's broken down the value system to blacking out the unimportant parts of the information you know that this is a tree from the rudimentary part of it that's exposed the rest of it's shadowed out now that also uh, puts to the emotional resonance that you're getting out of this panel now and then the next part of that that supports that is the color choices this melancholic kind of washing of values but then the focus is on right here on the statue of saint christopher the saint that is it who was it no who fought the dragon i'm trying to think of who fought the dragon is it sir peter and the dragon anyhow whatever it is if anybody remembers that please put it in the comments uh, in, in the chat or, or in the comments for the video however he sees him here in his clearing this is what he's moved towards now he's holding a spear this one's holding a sword and uh and so we go we focus in on that image there's a tranquil sense with the flowers we expand that out to be a little bit more with this larger panel and the bird goes like this and then george yes thank you sir george and uh, george versus the dragon thank you linda so the bird whistles and then the bird opens its mouth again but no sound we're focusing on the, the quiet moment this is this is a pause statue pause stat or, or i'm sorry statue pause pause uh oh oh not a and then the bird flies off so now we know trouble is about to take place but for setting up a scene sir george fought the dragon yes thank you Linda. um the but for setting up a scene this is a really strong way of doing it it's put so much emotional intensity in it it's broken it down to the key elements of it very very little text because it wants us to have the ooh, tension of the moment right and uh the color palette is very muted his red stands out in a huge contrast against the complementary color of the green that he's on that is behind him the light color behind the bird which is similar in value to here which is similar in value to here right just a wonderful contrast and it just sort of sets up something bad's gonna happen you know but uh he's got uh really interesting stuff in his stories it's one of the sketch pages there you go see sir george and the dragon there's a, a crocodile monster around the statue and uh so in this story where his hellboy has to take down this crocodile monster the statue of sir george falls on it and pales at the end because hellboy himself isn't doing faring at all very well against the monster so it's kind of interesting that different uh creatures there's uh okay so here's a wonderful simplistic image you've got this rocky area that looks like it could have some you know brickwork here and looks like there might be some buildings here here's this giant crazy stone here's this light source that's directing our attention into here where there's a silhouetted figure everything about this the line moving down here the line moving down here even though there's the tough grass in there right the line bringing us into here this line drawing us down to there everything makes us focus on that character the stars the blackness of the shaded areas 
taking out all of this information. It would make it too complicated if it was all in there. But the fact that that matches this makes it seem like it's even darker and deeper than it might be. So that's, you know, that's the kind of power and simplistic line that uh, Mike Mignola is uh, able to do. This is, uh, this is a story called the Varkulak, the Varkulak. And uh, here he is, he's going to go and get a vampire. You know, the floor gives out as he gets there. Jeez! He doesn't actually swear. You know, he uh, he comes close. To, you know, you know, saying some some uh, oh Sanama, but he never does, and I kind of like that. Um, so then he arrives in a, a basement that has lots of uh, sarcophaguses in it, and uh, he's like, oh no, you know. So the Varkalak is just one of those things where look at the simplicity of the line. All the vampire monsters are around him, and then she says, no, run away. You know, and so they all start turning the bats and pull him up into the sky. And that's when she says, uh, "Here is the great Lord of the Vampires, and his shadow, you know, covers the moon, which is like old fairy tale stuff, right?" But wonderful uh, stuff because it's a spell. You know, a minute later, he finds her sarcophagus and he says to her, "Hey, you put the whammy on me," and then takes out the vampire <laughs> you know, so. anyways i really really enjoy mike mcnola's work he's been doing this is just specifically about his one book but i've been following mike mcnola for a long long time and uh just just love his work so um the last one is uh that i'm going to show you today is uh bravo for adventure by alex toth now alex toth is responsible for the Super Friends and a whole lot of uh, Hanna Barbera's Saturday morning cartoon characters and cartoon development. Uh, but he was also an absolutely brilliant storyteller and uh, illustrator. And this is probably the best example I can show you of simplifying the storytelling, stif simplifying the art so that it does the key thing that's necessary. Linda says, what a fun story. They're, that's just one of his silly things. There are volumes and volumes and volumes of of, uh, of Mike Magnola's work. He adapted Fafood and the Grey Mouser, which is uh, a fantastic, fantastic book from, I think, the 20s or 30s, something like that, pulpies. Uh, so this is the Jesse Bravo character, who's like a uh, spy, gadabout, troublemaker, out in the world, pilot, you know. Bravo for adventure. So this is set in the 1930s. He looks like Errol Flynn on purpose. You know, you get right away with the simplicity of the approach to it. Here he is stepping outside of the confines of the, the, the cockpit of this airplane. Now, if you look at this, it makes perfect sense. It looks, you, you look at it and you get the immediacy and the action of him stepping out of the cockpit. But if you spend too much time looking at it, you'll realize that he has his proportions a little. He stretched the proportions a little bit to facilitate what he needs it to facilitate. He's foreshortened the leg so that you get the sense he's stepping out of the cockpit. But truth is, his hip should be over there. So anyways, um, his proportions are amazing, but he did that on purpose for us. And you wouldn't realize it unless you spend a lot of time staring at it. But this is where I talk about three, three value systems will help you simplify and break down an image. And uh, so, and what that is, is dark value, intermediate value, and light value. Okay? Dark value, the inside of this car. Okay? Intermediate value is uh, Bravo, our main character, okay? And then the light value is the, 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 the washed out sky behind him that's not even drawn in. So that gives you a sense of depth. And Alex Toth is an absolute master of it. Like here is another example, same page. Here's some complex stuff with some dark, dark shadows here in our foreground. This entire midground 
is intermediate values, cross hatching, there's a plane, but it not as defined as this plane with the lines on the wings and a little view inside the cockpit. But Bravo is just a shadow and the person he's walking with is just a little silhouetted shadow. And it also gives you a sense of scale of the size of the hangar, you know. So it's a wholly different approach to, to storytelling when you reduce it down like this. And yet, what a strong ability to do so. We see them, there's our definable line, okay? But the sky is just textured out. So there's our washed out value in the back. Here's the two of them, half illuminated in, you know, reflective light. All of this is silhouetted out. This is not important. This is important. This is the larger scene. So if you get an opportunity, I recommend looking at really powerful illustrators like Alex Toth. He has a facility for telling so much story using such so few lines. Like, look at this. Here's a runway or a road. Goes off into the distance. We've silhouetted out the sign for the road. This big rock for this intermediate plane, but it gives a sense, sense of distance as we go past this. There's a receding, the receding lines here that go to this background that's completely washed out in light from whatever it is that's blown up over there. You know, and as the smoke goes off in the sky, it goes more and more, and as it billows out and farther away, it gets darker and, and taken out. But it's a strong, such a strong way to give us a sense that this is taking place at night. This is taking place, we're seeing it from a view, from a distance, right? To see this happened here, and this probably ran up and happened there. You know, that, you know, it's given us so much information, such, such a simple approach. Yeah, bravo. And Alex Toth's work is all like this. It really is. So at the back of this, he's got uh, some of his covers with a breakdown, simple breakdown of, of the, uh, the colors for them. And uh, bravo for adventure. Such a great title. You know, there's the color, there's the black and white. You know, just a great des design sense here. There's some of his layouts, some of his sketch work or stories that weren't completed. Here's his, here's his way he, uh, this is his way of structuring a story. You know, this is, this is him breaking down the entirety of an adventure. And some of the key things that he wants to put in, like this plane breaking at a 45 degree angle and we see the the as the aeroplane breaks diagonally this way the landscape is diagonally how can I do this you can see it that way in order to give a sense of movement in a static image really light really deep really uncomplicated yeah, so that's Alex Toth and uh, his, care, his story, Bravo for Adventure. I've shown Alex Toth on here a few times. So there's, uh, there's that. Um, now, I picked up a few things the other day. Um, and uh, hi, Miriam. Welcome aboard. So I picked up some more stamps, some more uh, little design stamps. I, uh, I use these uh, in the background of drawings and stuff that I do. So I'm excited to to put these to work. Um, and, uh, you know, I also picked up a couple things. So, uh, you know, I re uh, refreshed and got some more of these bad boys so that, uh, because I've been, you know, really putting mine to work. And, uh, you know, uh, just, just replenishing some of my existing tools that I already use. And I probably, I've, I've been just flat out using some of them up. Uh, the other stuff that I bought is, uh, um, the supplies for what I do here, it's just you can't necessarily see. And that is, if you can tell that the camera is finally on my yapper, it's because I, I got the a new um, camera holder directing it uh, the camera towards me. So, good news. And uh, 
in addition to that, I've got, uh, you know, some, some uh, stands for the lights to sit on so that I can just lock in and, and hold things up as the way they are. And, uh, and then, of course, I've got the stand right here beside me with the microphone so that it's catching all of my baritone voice right here. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that people can hear me. Okay, so exciting stuff. Uh, the other thing that I did yesterday that I walked through in the last video is I did a whole whack of jelly plating and uh, 19 images. I did uh, 19 jelly plates yesterday. And uh, for stuff that's going to work for really great, uh, you know, base uh, base uh, pages to draw on top of. So there's a bunch that I did in this format. And then there's a bunch. Let me see. Yeah, there they are. I got them flipped over. That's why I'm not seeing them. Uh, and then there's a bunch that I did in uh, this format. So that, uh, oh, that looks really kind of... Ugh, yeah. the color's great though so this is a bunch of panel shapes to have to draw a story utilizing these panels like so and uh, what I did is I took some old prints that uh, I've done from previous books and I've had just gathering around the studio stuff I wouldn't even take to conventions and that anymore and uh, but from books that I've already you know illustrated and published and put out uh, and I use those as the basis for doing all of this printing on. So, because I don't like wasting things. So that's why you can see some of it leaking off to the sides. And uh, I think that might be about it for those. Yeah. So, you know, but I got uh, a lot of stuff ready to roll. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't have information on it, like uh, Brer Off and stuff like that, that, uh, that I've got to use as well. So... Looking forward to uh, to using uh, these to get a whole bunch of uh, stuff done, you know, stuff uh, stuff going on in process and and uh, yeah, you know. What's that? Oh, that's another one. There you go. <laughs> all right, so uh, so I've got a whole bunch of stuff prepared for myself to start working on. These are all in landscape format because I like drawing stories, writing and drawing stories in landscape format. Uh, these are in uh, portrait format vertical horizontal there we go so yeah so I'm going through these as uh, as I'm doing some pages but today I thought I would after talking to you about simple line art approach I thought I would be doing some drawing on uh, some straightforward line art for today's page um, you know and that's not to say that I'm not going to get carried away we, we know how I work uh, this is a book a, I've got a folders all set up for all my pages now and uh, so this is all of the pages that are going up on my website I walked through this in a previous video this week and I showed all of these pages that uh, are going up for sale on the website as well as uh, the uh, little uh, flip books for people that didn't get those I'm going to make those available on the website as well as the original art for all of those. So I've been busy this week, folks. But in addition to that, I got a couple of other things happening. Um, what do we got? We've got five folks right now. Um, so if anybody's been making uh, comments in, uh, in the streams, uh, let me know because. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, I'm including everybody for this week's uh, drawing draw. And if you won last week's, so, you know, of course, uh, you know, you're, you're, or if you've won uh, already, you want to give other people a chance, right? Just for a few weeks. Uh, let's see, what else have I got to show you? Oh, this is... Uh, this is a something. And uh, I'll be talking about this in a few minutes. But, um, you know, exciting news, exciting developments. Anyhow, the website being uh, is, that's being updated now is uh, I'm very pleased with that. It's something that uh, hasn't served me very much at all for the last so long. And uh, if I can get that running, that's great stuff. Uh, as usual, if you've got comments or uh, suggestions, I'm sorry, um, 
word prompts that you want to throw at me, anything like that, uh, let me know. And uh, put it in the chat, or if it's after the video is done, put it in the comments for the video. Anybody that is putting comments in the video, I'm doing a draw of those people's names, and uh, I'll be contacting them to pick a subject, and I will be doing a drawing from that. And I've already done that for the person who has won for this week, uh, up until now, but today we're going to do a, a draw draw in, uh, in, a, in, in pretty soon. So, um, okay, so I'm going through the book, the magic, magic book, and, uh, and picking out a, uh, uh, picking out a random thing to work on here. I, I try to, I, I've got a bunch of things that the reason I'm flipping a lot of pages is that, uh, I've got uh, a lot of, uh, you know, corporate characters suggested in streams or in suggested in, and uh, I tend not to go for those first because I, uh, I can't do anything with them. All right. I think I talked about this one the other day and that is a time traveling spaceship that uh, crashes into earth, sending its crew through time. That was one. Um, as the desert starts with smoke, mass hysteria, Catherine, uh. all right, well, we're going to do this. I mentioned about doing this to somebody, uh, Riri, uh, sent me this one, duets, which one is your favorite? So that's, uh, we haven't done anything for Riri for a little bit, so we'll do that. Um, and then we'll get, uh, on with other stuff. So... I have shown a lot of images of late. And in the course of showing those, uh, the reason that I have been doing this is because um, I've been collating all of these images and compiling together. Now in the last year, I've, I've tried to work with uh, someone to, to do a uh, a project to collect a bunch of things and I know that a few people have requested when am I going to put out another thing that collects a lot of the suggestions and uh, it's uh, in the next few weeks it'll be uh, well, I'll be uh, giving out a specific date soon but how I'm showing some of the pages give me a sec There we go. I'll open these. Okay, so so the way the format of how it's working is, uh, I'll just show you, and then we'll be doing an official, uh, all the official business for it soon. But um, here are three examples of. These, this is a layout that I'm using for uh, how it's going together. So there's green lines across, that's formatting stuff. But uh, what, what I'm showing here is a page from something that I'll be releasing very soon. And it'll be available on Amazon, uh, you know, for order. But these are the pages, what the suggestion was and what my thinking process is, uh, my, my thinking process was behind it, is what the text is that's underneath the suggestion, and then on the side or at the top, as it were, in this case, um, are uh, examples of the original art. So you can see how it started, and you can see how it finished. So that's what this is, and uh, here is examples of the various pages and the various, you know, original art that would go into each one. So this one was just straight on line art, which is what we've talked about for doing today. And, uh, you know, this is uh, watercolor and pencil crayon illustrations, the watercolor fish and the uh, pencil crayon 
two characters that are in front and so you see how I take those different elements and I assemble them together in the Photoshop take those two fish that I painted and turn them into a whole school of fish behind the guys you know um, and uh, jockeys just drawn and then digitally colored right whereas uh, the hamburgers there's uh, acrylic painting on paper underneath that is an acrylic painting of a hamburger on you know a paper bag from the grocery store and then beside that is uh, green pencil line art on paper that was then scanned and colored and then these three different elements you know put together to make up the composition because you can see in the art there's the, the hamburger but the guy isn't holding, actually holding the hamburger up in, in the original painting. He's just got his hand up like this. And, uh, and yet I assemble that together, you know, in the, uh, the magic robot. So, so this is, uh, these are some examples of uh, what uh, we'll be doing the big reveal thing for. And I'm going to do that so that I can invite you all here and, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, there's today's page. But this will be the thing to look out for. And that's this. So, yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting to me. Anyways. Um, so, yeah. So, keep, uh, keep, uh, you're finding out first here. So, keep, uh, if you're interested in this, it's, uh, it's, uh, the book will be almost 80 pages. So, <laughs> Lots and lots and lots and lots of pages. And uh, they're all in the same format. And then the next one will be the reason that I've got the, the differentiation between the landscape and the profile is that we've got enough to do a, another profile one. So, as well as another landscape one. Well, we did, you know, it's where I'm at. It's an 80 page thing, and I'm on, on my way to 500 pages in the last year and a half. So it's, you know, it adds up. All right, duets. Which one is your favorite? Um, Riri sends me memes, a lot of memes, and uh, one of them had people doing some duets, and I'm like, that's cool. Um, and then she suggested something about, you know, which one's your favorite? Du you know, is duets. And I didn't watch the video yet when she said that. I said, is that a suggestion for the book? And she says, yes. Okay. And then I realized that she was talking about the duets uh, video. So. So that's uh, why I've ended up having it become a one-page suggestion. But it's a lot of fun, so we're going to do that. Um, okay, so uh, what time are we at? Why don't we got eight people here in uh, five, uh, five minutes. We'll do the, the, a draw for this week's drawing, okay? And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get crack a lacking on uh, today's, uh, today's page. Um, the suggestion is duets. Which one is your favorite? And, uh, you know, I'm, this, this is going to be a silly one. Um, so, bear with me. Cats and kittens, guys and duels. So, with something like duets, which one is your favorite? Now, I've got, there it is. Oh, I've also got a bunch of new uh, mini zine books coming out too. That are all they're all finished and put together. Okay, so uh, duets. Which one is your favorite? Now, I thought I'd do this for you. Duets. I'm gonna zoom in in a second. I have become more and more lazy in my writing, where I just don't even lift the pencil. All right, duets, which one is your favorite? Now, um, so with that, we can look at this a couple of ways. We know a duet is hello and hello. Here are our two, uh, two people, you know, singing. Uh, here's Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. Here's, uh, you know, I don't, I can't think of it. Conway T T Twitty and, yeah, I don't, no idea. So, um, notice that no contemporary names come up in my head. So, uh, yeah, so here we go. So the, if the idea of duets is two people singing on the microphone together, how do we tell a story that has some sort of movement 
and uh, direction to it. You know, the easy thing would be for us to say, you know, here's a competition. Uh, duets, which one is your favorite? And here we are at the, the great sing-off, you know, and uh, y there's two ways that we can do this. We can have it j just be rooted into traditional television of uh, whatever the show with that jerk Simon guy, you know, the really, really not a very nice person. Um, Simon something. Doesn't matter. Don't even have to comment on what his name is. It doesn't matter. Um, anyhow, we could do it like that where uh, Howie Mandel, he's on one um, as a, a judge. So, but why don't we extend that farther? Okay. Duets, which one is your favorite? Because the duets that you're going to think of for characters, you know, or, or real life people that have sang together, sorry. Uh, aren't going to be what the next person beside you thinks of initially because we're all different. We're all different uh, tastes and appreciation and ages. So who uh, who I'll come up with is probably not uh, uh, Taylor Swift and the Puff Daddy. I don't know if they do edit the song, but I hope they have just because ridiculous. So we want to establish right off the hop. Here's our two people singing right away and establishing the tone of the the piece and tone get it duet anyhow so here they are doing their duet and uh we can put up we can try to switch things up and be a little fun and silly where we put up duets you know and put up the big logo for the show here in this panel and then we can maybe put the host of the show and and now hey ladies and gentlemen bloody blah 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 and you know we've got our judges behind them just so that we don't have to waste real estate on our page of drawing a panel for the judges and the guy at the same you know we can have both of them laid out like so and uh and then we can spend the rest of our space of the page having fun drawing different characters duetting the, the gist of it is duets. Which one is your favorite? So we can have the, the whole duets right here. You know, America's favorite, blah, 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 blah. I'm your host, you know, Zubidi Zabzu, and we're here to listen to today's favorite singers. So there we go. So there's a, a quick way to just sort of rough out an idea and to sort of pull things out and to get them rolling. And I thought it would be a little more fair if I started doing a bit more of this for folks because uh, I just, my head just immediately starts going off into uh, into my imagination. And what that doesn't afford, however, is the opportunity to, to sort of uh, involve you in that creative process that's happening upstairs in that old noggin of mine. So one of the things that I'm gonna try is to to do that a little bit more so i thought we'd break it down for examples of uh duet couples plus our we can reiterate these guys as one of the one of the competitors and then of course we'll have our singer at the end who's waving at the winners and uh you know he's blah 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 blah, blah singing about the winners that are over there you like that? I wrote that song myself, just for you. Okay, so, but before we do that, I'm going to pull out my random number generator, which I wrestled off an exotic man from a mysterious place. And uh, so what I'll do is that I'll put, uh, I'm going to pick a number between... Uh, 1 and 20. So, and we'll do that in just a minute. Um, but in the meantime, is anybody else that might be engaged in, in the stream today, does anybody else have any ideas about duets? Is there a specific duet that you've always remembered and sort of, of liked? Um, because the ideas that are coming to my head are silly. Like uh, Rod Stewart and Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck didn't sing Rod Stewart sang, you know, the song, and Jeff Beck's like, bah, 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 bah. 
you know, it's just nonsense. It's like uh, um, Santana and Rob Thomas. You know, Rob Thomas is singing a song and Santana's just playing his guitar in that, but it's like, oh, check it out, this great, you know, great uh, combination. It's like, they're not even singing together. Because um, Santana can sing. And uh, then there's Celine Dion and, I don't know, a boat. She duetted with something or... So, yeah, so there's, if there's, because all I'm thinking of is either old ones or random things, but, uh, like, uh, Reeves and Mortimer. <laughs> Miriam says, Ben and Teller will be fine, but neither of them sing. Yeah, they gotta sing. Teller doesn't, Teller doesn't even speak. That will work. <laughs> How you doing, Marisa? It's a great idea, though. But, uh, yeah, you can't, uh. You can't do uh, a duet of Penn and Teller when one of them is the only one that does the talking and singing. Um, but I, it's really fun. Yeah, see, Linda says, I, I remember Islands in a Stream with Dolly and Kenny Rogers. Uh, yeah, that's the one that I, I, the only one I think I've referred to. Um, I know that there's, uh, my mother had an album of, who was it uh, that sang Stand By Your Man? Uh I think she was married to Glenn Campbell because there's an album where these two are duetting. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. Uh, her and Glenn Campbell were singing duet songs, and my mother loved it. You know, um, not my jam. But okay, so uh, yeah, if anybody can, can uh, think of anything, like Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer have these two characters that. I can't remember their names, but they're these absolutely ridiculous guys that uh, are awful singers. And Loretta Lynn. Is that who it was? It was Loretta Lynn and Glenn Campbell? There you go. Um, so, uh, I, those, those guys come to mind because I've just been really enjoying watching a lot of Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer stuff lately. Okay, so when I uh, I say go, a go, I... Um, if you want to put down a number between 1 and 20, and I will leave this open, Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. Oh! Is that Endless Love? Is that that song? I think that's Endless Love. Yeah, that's a fun... Okay, we'll write down Diana Ross, Lionel Richie. That's a... Yeah... Wouldn't that be fun to draw that with him dancing on the ceiling? Uh, <laughs> upside down from her. Johnny and June. There you go, Tina. Nicely done. Yeah. Johnny and June. If For those that don't know, for those that aren't in the new, that's Johnny Carter and June Cash. Yeah. Uh, I live in a city where he, he asked her to marry him, eh? Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's June Carter and Johnny Cash. Uh, here in, here in London, there was a, an old, uh, uh, London Gardens, it was called. And so when, uh, he was performing and her family, the Carter's family singers were, were there performing in his repertoire as well. Uh, at one point, I gotta ask a question. I'm on over here, June. Yeah. So Simon and Garfunkel, there you go. There you go. Are you going to my cousin Lou's? Something like that. Okay, so I'll say go, and I'll leave this open for uh, the next five minutes or whatever. So if people want to... Uh, why is it not? Oh, okay. So I'll leave this open, and uh, if people want to put a number down, and uh, between 1 and 20, okay? And uh, I'll leave it open for the next five or ten minutes. Miriam in the bathroom mirror. <laughs> ah, it's going down on the list. Miriam in the bathroom mirror. That'd be a fun one, Miriam. Especially if uh, Maxie walked up behind you and, What are you doing? <laughs> okay, so... All right, so there you go. Uh, but no, between one and twenty, Miriam. Um, and so I'll let people fill that in. We'll let that go for the next uh, uh, x amount of time. 
you know, and that way we uh, populate the, the numbers up here. Okay, so yeah, so pick a number between 1 and 20, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we got three down, and I'll, I'll just let this go for a few more minutes, and then uh, I will contact whoever it is that, uh, that wins. Okay, so we got to start, all right? And as ideas come up for people of uh, any more duet ideas, Weird Al and his accordion, you know, I don't know what, but uh, we'll start putting those down. So I thought, uh, let's just get crack a lacking, and uh, I'm going to, oh, he's doing it. He's sharpening up that old pencil. All right, so uh, I'm just going to get started. I'll do, uh, I'll do this couple to start off with. Um, the last page I did was, uh, I did a, can you see? Yeah, that's coming in. Okay, good. Uh, do I need to adjust this a little bit? Yeah. There you go. A little bit better. All right. So uh, I thought I'd start off with just having a nice couple singing a song. A little karaoke action going on there. But again, if anybody's joining or if anybody's hiding in the back, lurking, hiding in the back, lurking, feel free to put your number forward. Number between 1 and 20. And then we'll go from there. I've already done a couple of drawings. I've got another one that I'm doing right now for somebody and uh, that I picked this morning and uh, from comments on the on the uh, channel last few days on videos. And I'll keep that open. I don't mind doing two drawings uh, a week. We'll do one as a draw during this stream and uh, We'll do one as, uh, uh, and then I'll have picked one from the uh, the comments and in, in, uh, in the videos. Can somebody win twice in a week? Could that happen? Yeah. Why not? Get a more complicated drawing, maybe. A little bit of mental health when you're drawing. Uh, you know, just to draw as opposed to, you know, a job, drawing a, a page is easy, but drawing, working on other people's books is, is not. I was, uh, somebody had offered uh, a script recently to me to work on a story and uh yeah just no it's uh there's a certain point where i'm at a i'm in a very uh, uh, blessed to be in a position where i don't have to take uh, a story if it doesn't gel with you know how i look at the world and uh and my beliefs and so I turned him down. I said, I appreciate the offer, but uh, I'm going to pass. It was all babes and, and giant uh, demon monsters and yeah, metal. Yeah, I don't want it. Not my jam. Not my jam. <laughs> all right. So we give a few. Uh, few more minutes for people to pick a number. Or I'll just do one for you three. There we are. Woo! So I thought I'd do this uh, uh, I'm starting off with an Asian couple doing karaoke. I mean, what what other ways are to start off here? Oh, 
Oh, that's nice, Maritza. Maritza sub to Miriam. Super cool. That's nice. Uh, I really appreciate uh, myself, and I know uh, Miriam does as well, that people uh, subscribing and seeing what we're up to. And and uh, it's, it helps. It really does help uh, with... If you can get so many people to subscribe, then you're able to do more things. And... Uh, and they'll let uh, you engage with more people. And it's like, I'm learning all about this right now, by the way. And, uh, you know, I thought about doing uh, a whole bunch of uh, testimonials of my favorite hams or, or whatever else that people get up to for these platforms with 30, 40, you know, thousand people for your ham reviews, you know. Or uh, check out the new shoes that just bought. 63,000 views. <laughs> Maybe I should be doing some of that. Check out this ham. And I'll just hold up a piece of ham. Look at that ham. It's got good form to it. The right color. You can put it on your face like a mat. I don't know. But uh, no, I'm just a guy who... Uh, who draws stories. So I, uh, I appreciate every subscriber I get. I think I, uh, it, it, it's very nice that we're all engaging with one another. And I try to subscribe to people too. It's right back because it's, it's very nice that uh, people do that. looks like I've just given her a top knot and then side sideburns and, and that's all. So, you know, I'm a monster. Maritza, did you uh, pick a number between 1 and 20? If you haven't, do so. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so. 17. That's how old I am. In my dreams. So, uh, I tend to draw fairly tightly when I'm doing uh, pencil work. There tends not to be a lot of gesticulative lines and stuff like that. I tend to just get down into it. And it has an awful lot to do with the fact that if I'm drawing it, I don't want to ink it as well. So if I, uh, if I do it in pencil, uh, I can scan it and uh, convert it to black line art and just get right down to coloring that and getting on with my day. So um, so yeah, so I tend to draw really, really tightly with uh, the images that I put together. Some people are like, "How come you aren't more gest you know, gestural?" Well, you know, because I'm uh, uh, I'm up tight and tense, tense. That's uh, an easier explanation than I'm lazy. <laughs> Okay, so here's our first person coming together. They need a microphone, so let's give them one of those. And uh, because, well, yeah, how are you supposed to sing without holding a mic? And we'll give uh, all these are shapes, folks. The some people are like, I don't know how do you draw a microphone. Shapes, just shapes. She's really built it out. Nice. Okay, so, all right, what, uh, what time are we at now? Let me see. I, I've, I've let it go for X amount of time. So, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to write down, we have to come up with, all right, so what do we got? We got Linda and uh, Linda Renz. And if you are, I'll tell you what, if you're subscribed here, I really, really appreciate that. If you're subscribed on um, Instagram, I'll, I will send you the pictures through Instagram. Uh, Tina Svanberg, probably pronounced that wrong, and I apologize, Tina. Uh, Linda Renz, Miriam, and Maritza. 
Um, I read that as yam. I, I, I've read it numerous times as yarn and crafts. It's a great name. But for whatever reason, I read that as yam. Maritza's yam. And I didn't read the and crafts part. Whew. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to hit the number generator. And uh, it says that uh, the number is um, 12, 8, 5, and 17. So there's our winner today. Our number is 12, 8, 5, and 17. So I'll type in stop. And then I'll type in today's winner. So now we got to figure out what I'm going to draw. So if anybody has uh, an idea of uh, what we can draw here, I'll tell you what, uh, each person that won today suggest one thing. One thing. And we will uh, do something with that. Okay, Linda says train. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, but thank you everybody for, for taking part in today. And we'll do this more, you know, and each week I'll do the draw. And I'm sure that, you know, over time more people will come for it. But um, I just, I really appreciate you guys taking part in today. And so each of you are, uh, are in the, the thing. So uh, Tina, Miriam, and Maritza. Is it Maritza or Maritza? I'm going to pronounce it as Maritza. Um, and if I'm wrong, please tell me. Suggest a thing. A thing. All right, so I've got, here's our couple singing a duet. And I'm going to do the whole, she's in front like this. And then he's right over her shoulder because, you know. Miriam, you got a lot of requests for being or for you being drawn today. <laughs> All right, Miriam. Miriam is suggesting Miriam. There we go. Didn't you already uh, suggest you uh, in the mirror? Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, that's good. Good fun. Okay, so here's our first couple that's going to be singing. So I'll put her in, and she's just uh, you know, having a go, you know, giving her some, some hair. There we go. Here's our first, our first character. Tina says a frog. There we go. I, uh, I'm actually helping a friend finish off a book about frogs. <laughs> Miriam says too egocentric today. <laughs> All right, so we're just waiting to hear what uh, Maritza's uh, thing, character, thing, toaster, Cleveland, Ohio. No restrictions. One thing. Person, place. Object. A potato salad? Could you put some potato salad in that picture? You know what we could do is just for fun we could have this couple singing I runs in the stream. Yeah. So I'm just I'm rather than lots and lots and lots of lines, I'm using shapes in order to build up her hair. Here and to just break it down into a form. I'm trying to, I'm trying to play a little bit more with uh, the lines and shapes that I use, and uh, to try to simplify some things sometimes because you can get a lot of fun out of that. Like the, all of, you know, she's got some some folds in her neck and some, you know, we all uh, age and and wrinkle. I used to look like a pretty face little thing 1,000 years ago.
<laughs> you know what? I can't help myself. I'm giving her uh, wings. Little fairy wings. Because uh, I want to. And I can do it. I'll put her in a fairy costume. It's important that you wear fancy ornate outfits when you're singing duets and television quiz shows. Or, uh, I guess it's a, what do you call that kind of show? Competition show, I guess. Yeah. Okay, well. If there's anybody that's uh, in the chat today that's just... Uh, being a, a lucky Lou, you're welcome to suggest uh, I don't know what to call it, lurker, balcony, in the background. Hey, lucky Lou's fun. Oh, begin a bit of a lucky Lou. Feel free to suggest a, a thing as well. So my wife has turned up the heat in my studio and like redirected uh, our, our heating in our house a little bit so that I get more heat down here in the studio <laughs> which is why I don't have to wear so many sweaters now <laughs> because she's better with the uh, thermostat than I am so all right so we're gonna give her some fairy wings because we can I think you're ego, uh, egocentric. I don't think you are, Mary, but I don't pay enough attention to other people. <laughs> That's exactly I'm egocentric. All right, so here's her crazy wings, which uh, are, of course, going to get uh, in front of uh, our guy. And the reason that I drew those in before drawing our, our next character is because I want uh, I'm going to have uh, you know them see through so that whatever he's he's wearing and I'm going to put a towel around his neck like Elvis um, the wings are, are over. you can see through the wings for it so that when I color it this is going to be there'll be a, a really light value that's over top of that like a light, really light pink so that it registers as uh, as a see-through object Okay, so one more item from Maritza, and uh, and then we'll have our four suggestions. Train, Frog, and Miriam <laughs> are th three things so far. We're just waiting for one more. Um, that's a lot of fun, folks. That's a story about Miriam juggling trains and frogs. In here. Whoop, whoop, da, 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 da. Tina says, she looks like Oprah Winfrey to me. I wouldn't draw Oprah Winfrey. She's the devil. You get a car. You know everybody that she gave cars to in the audience that day on her program? Uh, all of those people could only have those cars if they could pay the taxes off the purchase of those cars, like the taxes for the full value of the car uh, before uh, getting their car. Uh, and uh, so many of those people that were in uh, that studio audience didn't get a car. It's uh, that was revealed by uh, one of her staffers. We only got one if they could pay the tax for it. My favorite talk host, talk show host, is uh, wasn't. Uh, Back in the day, I always liked Donahue more than I liked Oprah, largely because he'd say, John, tell us what your thoughts are on this thing over here. And then he'd go, <laughs> Oh, you're not, you can't even see me. I'm being a goofball. Uh, he'd say, John, tell us what your thoughts are on uh, this thing over here. And then he'd hold the microphone 
right at whoever the guest was, and he just just leaned forward with it over his head and put it, you know, the stoop on his knee at the at the uh, stage. He's such a silly guy, but that's not my favorite talk show. My uh, my my favorite interviewer of uh, celebrities and all that jazz. It uh, it was Jimmy uh, Jimmy Glick. That guy was awesome. And if you don't know who Jimmy Glick is, you need to look him up on the YouTubes. Because he just, you know, there's no other interviewers like him. He's just so wonderful and remarkable and unique. I wish that uh, we had more of them. Miriam asked, does he have wings too? No, no wings for him. He's dressed as Elvis. <laughs> so, oh, I better give him the, uh, here you go. There we are. He'll be dressed as Elvis. There we go. We'll give him the big lapel and uh, we'll, uh, let's take that neckline out of there. And uh, get that uh, get that little chest out. Very much. So one of those books that I referred to today that I was telling you, one of those uh, creators, his book called The Goon. It's about a guy whose heart was broken. Uh, so he moved with his friend Frankie down to. Uh, and he moved into this ho uh, place called the Heartbreak Hotel. Uh, and it's located at the very end of Lonely Street. So good. Um, Dracula. <laughs> He's Elvis. You gotta give him the Elvis. Um, I'm trying to think. Where did he have the golden? Oh, he had a sash around his waist. That's what it was. Yes, yeah, it's, it's Vegas Elvis. That's why he's got uh, the towel. That's so we can stand up there and say, Are you lonesome tonight? But, but in this case, he's singing with her, Arms in the stream. And I gotta give them crazy names. They, they need the really silly names, these two. To do a have them sing and you've lost that loving feeling and it turns out it's a brother and a sister you've lost that love feeling or a, a really awkward air supply song Drawing in straight line art, it, I, I find it moves a lot faster. I can, uh, I think my record for drawing pages in a day is four. <laughs> it's a, it's a, oh, it's almost four. I almost finished the fourth page. I didn't get the last panel done um, during that day. I had to go do something. But, and I think it's entirely due to the fact that, uh, you know, I was uh, just doing the, the line art. Little, little fold in his his uh, the fabric of his outfit here and we'll get uh, let's get her whole hand in here and that way uh,
you know, we don't want to cut her, her, her hand off. There we go. There she is. She's gorgeous. She's just belting it out. She's singing, knowing me, knowing you. Uh -huh. I have to come up with a good song for them to be singing. There's the couple. Let's get that line across the bottom here. And then we'll have him standing behind her. I'll move his line up just a little bit, just to make it more interesting. <laughs> Jesus. Does he have wings too? Now you're in my country. There we go. Okay. So here she is singing. And uh, I think I'll have him holding the microphone out so we'll put uh, his microphone up here like so and as he's singing it so <laughs> Tina says singing ABBA how did you know that was ABBA no. there are a few things more interesting than people singing songs that you know the last people that you would think to be singing singing a song by somebody and uh, there was a place years and years and years ago when uh, I was but a single lad and uh, I used to do my laundry at a at a laundromat that was directly attached to a bar so while you're doing your clothes you could go in and, and buy a glass of beer while you're waiting and uh, but there was a karaoke uh, session that was always right beside where the laundromat was and I heard some of the most fantastic, fantastic versions of uh, of songs sung by people that, you know, you're like, is that, is that ABBA? <laughs> I heard two bikers. I heard two bikers singing Super Trooper. You, you can't, you know, you can't recover from that easily. I'm just saying, but... Uh, my grandmother was from Mor Moro, Transylvania, Romania. There you go. Tina's Swedish. I'm a Canadian there, eh? You know? This, 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 can, people from Canada, unless your parents are directly born someplace, we're just Canadians. And it's uh, one of the, the joke references here is you're a Heinz 57 because, you know, you're just a mix of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever goes in that old genetic bottle to make you but it's you know it's probably you know from germany ireland scotland england <laughs> wales uh you know uh, the netherlands uh sweden norway <laughs> it's just all all the uh the white british and uh, united kingdom and uh, european countries That's a lot of who came here. And a lot of people from Detroit that came from the other. other. All right, so here's our, our happy uh, our happy couple. His head is way too big. I am overzealous in putting this head, guy's head down. And there was something. I just couldn't quite put my, uh, my finger on it, and I just drew his noggin way too large. So we'll cut it down a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, if you can, if you get a chance, like there's a band called the Cardigans and they did that song, Love Me, Love Me, Say That You Love Me. They did a cover of uh, I Am Iron Man by Black Sabbath. That is the prettiest... <laughs> 
You don't realize it's Black Sabbath. It's a Black Sabbath song. Because she's got this do 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 voice, and it's like, oh my goodness, perfect band is to cover that song. I'm a big Tom Waits fan, and uh, you know, so many other people have sung his songs that you don't realize they're. That most people don't realize they're Tom Waits songs. Oh, it's easier to put your finger on if the head is. Put your finger on if your head is the bigger. Oh, there you go. I was so uh, zoned in on drawing him, trying to make sure I've got Mr. Chubby-Faced uh, Asian Elvis that uh, I got a little overexcited in how big I was making his head. I don't know why I uh, pick whatever characters I pick for things. I'm just having fun. Maritza, if you're still here, you have not chosen a thing yet. We'll get it. We'll find her. I'll, 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 I'll run to wherever she is in the planet and I'll run up to her door panting. <laughs> She'd be like, who are you? Why are you here? And I'm like, you didn't pick a thing for the draw. So, yeah. We'll get it sorted out. So, yeah. So, uh, hopefully, when we do uh, our upcoming launch for projects here, People are going to be interested in that, and uh, you know, wanting to read whatever, have a copy of whatever. And I'll be on the New York Times bestseller list. So people will be like, "What in the world is this here?" It's because my mother bought four hundred and fifty thousand copies. <laughs> Yeah, that's not happening. There's my cute karaoke couple. And they're singing, Come on, baby, right my fire. Like uh, Prince's song "Kiss," Tom Jones made that a big hit too. Like they, that was a small hit for Prince, but a massive hit for Tom Jones. And uh, I, I, I know people that have no idea that Prince wrote that song. That, that when they actually recorded that on an album before Tom Jones did. But come on, it's Tom Jones. Tom Jones fans love Tom Jones. Okay, so here's our guy. I've got to draw his hand now. Holding his microphone. Is that our finger? We'll give him pinky out, pinky out. Look at that stylish guy. Needs more hair for Elvis. He's not Elvis though. He's just wearing an Elvis costume here. He can't help it. His hair's the way it is.
is a sleeve. I'm making up what the Elvis costume looks like. I can't remember what it looked like, so. These are his tassels. Are they longer? Are they longer? Are they longer tassels? So I like the idea of drawing them longer tassels. I need more hair for Elvis. It's a great uh, show called uh, Father Ted, where they're having a Halloween party on the island, and uh, the three different priests that all live in this same parochial house all dress up as Elvis. <laughs> There's a young priest, middle-aged priest, and an elderly priest, and it's the three ages of Elvis. And people are like, didn't Elvis pass away? Don't you say that. <laughs> that's not a tassel, but the deodorant that's abandoned them. There you go. There you go. Okay, so, all right, we got a good start on this page. I got uh, some good uh, word prompts here that we'll do a page. A drawing here for uh, Tina and Miriam and Linda. And we'll get that done and and uh, and out uh, out to you guys and. Get uh, old uh, Tortelvis here. There's a uh, there's a band that was in Toronto in the 1990s called Dred Zeppelin, and they had a, a, an Elvis impersonator called Tortelvis uh, singing um, songs, doing an Elvis impression in front of a reggae metal band, and uh, you know. <laughs> So they, you know, he's like, since my baby left me, <laughs> and then he does his uh, um, Led Zeppelin, uh, whole lot of love, <laughs> sung by an Elvis impersonator. Ah, oh, they were great fun. I can't believe they're doing that. So funny. A friend of mine was so annoyed by him. Ridiculous. He's a big Zeppelin fan. I believe they're ruining good Zeppelin. Okay, so here's our first couple. And uh, and so we've got our layout idea on this piece of paper here. And uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, it's so cool in a sense. Uh, so there's, uh, there's our breakdown of our layout as we're going to do it. We've got the couple here already. We're going to have the text above them their heads do it right and then we'll have uh the rest of the the sail pitches you know with that his arms in front of and then we'll go right to our hi i'm such and such and welcome to this show and so i'll get all this drawn up for uh for tonight and and, and have this posted for tomorrow uh and i've got uh something special uh special video i'll be putting up tomorrow folks so take a watch for that um it's a bit of a change around right now on uh the stream where uh, where I'm doing less of uh, the live stuff just just because I need a break I've done a year and a half of five days a week and uh, but we're gonna try some different things it gives me a little more time for video editing but I've needed a little more time for a bunch of business things and a bunch of uh, projects that I'm on right now so uh, I appreciate everybody's understanding and we'll get back to doing some uh, more regular lives soon um, I've got uh, a bunch of guests uh, uh, planned for, for coming up, and we're going to do all kinds of neat and fun things. But in the meantime, we're doing what we're doing. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks for coming out and uh, taking part, and uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be posting uh, a page, uh, the pages and videos tomorrow, and if you want to see the original art, that'll all be on uh, the Patreon. And I appreciate everybody that's uh, supporting me on Patreon. It's really nice. Three bucks a month. I, man, you guys are fantastic. 
Uh, and then I've got all kinds of extra beeps and buzzes that are going to be popping up there with all of these pages that I'm finishing off um, today. Actually, well, tonight, you know. But the day is 24 hours. <laughs> That's what I hear. All right. Uh, thanks again, everyone. And uh, I appreciate you coming and hanging out. And uh, I'll see you very soon. But uh, yeah, new video up tomorrow. Bye for now.